Hello my dear friends, you're in the military of a summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 17th of June of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to talk about Kharkiv direction. During the previous 24 hours we got a significant number of videos of how the Ukrainians were trying to attack the Russian forces and how the Ukrainians were trying to dig in deeper right on the outskirts of the village of Gluboka. First video was published by the Russian sources somewhere at 6 a.m. of the local time uh, the Russians published how they managed to discover the position of Ukrainian personnel carrier and as a result of Lancet strike that carrier was destroyed this video was geolocated between these brushes late so we got additional video of how those Ukrainians who arrived in this area on that armored personnel carrier were trying to repel Russian counterattacks the Ukrainians of course were just few soldiers the Russians were counterattacking these positions in five or even more soldiers on as a result of those attacks, most likely the Ukrainians suffered losses and were captured. Most likely they were captured. Anyway, uh, right before we start making the video, we got additional posts from the Ukrainian sources. And according to them, there is something interesting happened today around Gluboka and that the Minister of Defense of Ukraine in the very near future will provide us additional updates about the situation. So for now, we are going to keep the area as is, as a gray zone, as a contested area, because we don't know for sure whether the Russians or the Ukrainians managed to establish complete control over this territory. As for the Russians, they gave their own opinion about the situation in the vicinity of Gluboka. The Russians reported that the Ukrainians made few attempts to attack. Most of those attempts were repelled by the Russians. The Ukrainians suffered significant losses and were forced to fall back. Now let's move to Volchansk direction. We have additional updates from this territory as well. As you can see, we have significant number of geolocations because the clashes are in the max phase or this like the final phase, not like the final phase, the phase when everything will be determined. Who is going to win the battle for the north of chance, either the Russians or the Ukrainians? Because uh, when talking about the positions and statements of both sides, the Russians are saying one thing, the Ukrainians are saying completely different things. For example, the Russians are saying that they managed to improve their positions inside the aggregate plant. Furthermore, according to the Russian sources, they managed to establish complete control over aggregate plant. As for the Ukrainians, they are saying that the Russians are encircled in the aggregate plant and that previous attempts to break through the encirclement were repelled by the Ukrainians. The Russians, according to the Ukrainians, have around 50 soldiers inside of the industrial zone and that the situation for them is very critical and the Ukrainians suggested the Russians to surrender. By the way, the Russians also suggested the Ukrainians to surrender. So, uh, when talking about the situation on the ground, once again, the Russian forces, according to the Ukrainians, there are just 15, 50 soldiers inside of the brigade plant, according to the Ukrainians, are encircled by uh, the Ukrainians and the Russians are saying that Ukrainians are located in the citadel in this part of um of Volchansk and that they are also encircled. The Russians are saying that there are the forces of 71st Jaeger Brigade uh, and it's unknown what kind of forces are located inside of the aggregate plant. So as you can see uh, they have encircled each other and now it's just a question how the situation is going to be developed in the eastern flank of um, uh, Volchansk because according to information we have the Ukrainians as a result of serious counterattacks that take, took place not just yesterday but been taking place for the previous let's say week or even more, managed to restore complete control over the village by the name of Tikha. So this territory uh, is already under Ukraine control. And this is very important foothold because just in this area the Ukrainians have possibilities to concentrate armored vehicles and tanks. The Russians uh, provided a lot of information about the status, let's say, between southern and the uh, northern part of Vovchansk. The Russians are saying that the Ukrainians made significant attempts to cross Vovcha River, but most of those attempts were repelled and, let's say, prevented by the Russians as a result of artillery strikes, FPV drone strikes. For example, in this video we can see another attack on Ukrainians who was trying to cross Vovcha river from the south in the northern direction. And of course the Ukrainians suffered losses. And anyway, if the Ukrainians somehow are able to redeploy their forces from the south to the north, anyway they can redeploy just infantry. Just light infantry with let's say ammo, maybe with some uh, water, a few bottles with water, maybe with some cigarettes, maybe with some grenades, and that's it. The Ukrainians don't have possibilities using this area to redeploy armored vehicles and tanks and armored vehicles and tanks is a vital question for the Ukrainians if they want to restore control and to force the Russians to fall back. 
So that's why the only way, the only area where the Ukrainians can do this is the area between Vovchansky Hutory, Pakalyana and the village by the name of Tikha. And during the previous weeks, the Ukrainians were concentrating their forces around Tikha. Uh, they redeployed some forces, some armored vehicles, maybe even tanks and other types of weapons. And starting off today, and not just today, maybe yesterday, maybe the day before yesterday, the Ukrainians made a lot of attempts to counterattack the Russians exactly in this direction. And the main purpose and the main reason of the Ukrainians' attacks in this area is to restore control over the main supply road that goes from the eastern Vavchansk, this one to the, let's say, the village by the name of Tikha. If the Ukrainians are able to restore this road, then they will be able to redeploy and to bring additional vehicles, armored vehicles, inside of the uh, border, inside of the borders of the northern Vavchansk. And then their battle will be completely different. But for now, most of the attacks according to the Russians were repelled by the Russians. The Ukrainians suffer significant losses. The Ukrainians for now don't know what to do but the only video we got uh, from this territory is uh, this one and according to this we, uh, video we can see how the russian forces uh, russian soldier surrendered to ukrainian uh, forces of 36 brigade he basically surrendered probably as a result of series of fpv drone strikes anyway the russians control these hills the russian remain in remains in this territory and it's the vital question for the ukrainians because we uh, nobody neither the russians nor the ukrainians have endless time uh, the the days are numbered until until the complete resolve of the situation because according to information we have the russians captured the aggregate plant completely so even if the ukrainians are encircled in the citadel and even if the russians are encircled in the aggregate plant today the russians reported that they are encircled in the entire aggregate plate so they basically complete establish complete control and now that means that the situation for the citadel is getting worse and worse for the forces of course for the 71st brigade also the russians added that uh, the ukrainian commanders the ukrainian military authorities decided to let's say to not to drop but to abandon these ukrainians and not to help them anymore because during the period of time they had the reinforcements that they were sending through vavcha river wasn't weren't enough to reinforce uh, positions of 71st brigade and the ukrainians attempts to break through the blockade was repelled so that's why the it's not even the story and the days are numbered it's already the end of the story and now it's just uh, the went matter of time when the forces of 71st brigade would be uh, captured encircled or i don't know would be uh, stay there forever now let's move further we are going to move to the north in Kupin's direction we have some additional updates from this territory just the regular attempts to attack from the russian side the most important report we got uh, for the previous 24 hours is that the russians managed to let's say answer and to attack uh, to get the village by the name of pishana from the south so this is uh, still Mahavka and this is the village this is it so yes according to information we have uh, the russians managed to improve their positions during the previous 24 hours and to summarize everything this is approximately the configuration of the line of combat contact that we can find right now in this direction so as you can see the russians are very close and the russians are about uh, to begin the storm of this uh, stronghold in the northern kupin's direction as for southern kupin's direction nothing special some interesting updates we received from the seversk area we still haven't received any confirmation that the russians control this stronghold so we are waiting for this update and the most important things are coming from the area of Razdolovka. Today we have additional geolocations and additional videos. The Russians continue storming uh, the village of Razdolovka, uh, yet they haven't managed to establish complete control over the territory. Probably the Russians control just 20 or even 15 percent of the territory, but we have additional geolocations confirming, let's say, more or less line of combat contact. The Ukrainian sources published the video of how they were FPV droning the Russians on the rail railway station Razdolovka, which confirms that as a result of clashes, as a result of attacks that the Russians conducted during the previous days, they managed to improve their positions and to capture this territory. So this small square is under complete Russian control. During the previous few days, we got the videos of how the Russians were attacking Razdolovka from this area and that the Russians cut the main supply road that were, was going to inside of Razdolovka from the northeastern direction.
and we have video how the russians continue clearing the territory in this video we can see the farms in the south eastern part of rasdolovka and how the russians were fpv droning this territory with the purpose to force the ukrainians to fall back from this territory completely now let's move to chesavyar we have additional updates uh, the russians are moving further in direction of seversky donetsk donbass canal in the eastern part we have additional update from different mappers and according to information we have during the previous 24 hours the russians captured these two small high-rise buildings a few days ago we got report that the russians captured the church now we have report about these two buildings so based on these uh, say reports we have adjusted the map and show this territory as contested so most likely the russians managed to maintain the line of combat contact and to reach the outskirts in the first buildings of chasavyar citadel but based on the experience we have and based on the reports we are receiving right now from uh, let's say uh, from Novochansk, uh, the beginning for battle let's say for Chesavyar Citadel doesn't mean the end of the battle for the eastern part of Chesavyar. Sometimes it can mean just the beginning of the battle because there is still a lot of job to do. Most likely the Ukrainians have a lot of roads for supply and support so they will try to win some days, weeks, so they will try to win as much as possible. And now let's move to Avdiivka direction. We have additional updates and the most important updates are coming from the village by the name of Vazdvizhenka. I'll remind you that Vazdvizhenka is the village that located between Nova Alexandrovka and the main supply road, um, the, let's say N32, that goes from Pakrovsk to Konstantinovka and to Slavensk, so to Donbass Arc Operation Heart. And the Russians start bombing and attacking this territory. And the, the number of strikes, number of artillery attacks reminds and tell us that maybe the Russians are planning to uh, begin offensive with the purpose to break through the Ukrainian's positions and to capture this territory. Of course, this is very dangerous operation first of all because if we take a look at the configuration of the line of combat contact we see that the russians are moving further and further in the northwestern direction and the russians are stretching their positions they're stretching the combat line they're stretching uh, the front line so uh, if the russians are planning to capture vazdvizhenka and to move their forces like this in this direction this can lead to significant losses from the russian side because in this case the russians will be let's say very far from the main artillery systems because uh, let's say to hold positions inside of Vazdvizhenka the Russians need to have their artillery system somewhere around the Chiretina which is very close to Evgenievka, Kalinova so basically the Russian artillery system would be destroyed as a result of Ukrainian FPV drone strikes not even counter artillery duos if the Russians are move, planning to move so far in direction of M32 they need to have they need to there are a few options how to do this first of all to improve their position around this area for these purposes the russians need to capture the village by the name of kalinova and of course the russians need to capture everything that located to the south of vazdvizhenka it's progress vovcha and evgenievka Voschod, including novosilovka persia so by improving their positions around the village the russians would be able to move further or the russians need to bring here long range artillery systems like malva or different types of weapon, different types of artillery that can attack Ukraine position within the range of 50 plus kilometers. This is also an option, but I'm not sure that the Russians have significant number of this type of weapon, or they need to have significant number of FPV drones, which can also support the Russian forces inside of Vazdvizhenka. So anyways, we can see according to information we have, this is the next Russian target. Furthermore, Sirsky, the head of the Ukraine army, confirmed that the main target of the Russians is to cross the road N32 and to collapse the support of Ukrainians inside of Konstantinovka and to begin the encirclement of Ukrainians in Taretsk, New York. So it's not very fast operation, it's like long-term operation, but anyway we see that the Russians are doing this. Now let's move in the southern direction, we have the clashes continuous for the main stronghold in the northern part of Sokol without any changes on the ground. The Russians are trying to improve their positions around Sokol in the southern direction, for now just a small gains, nothing more. Uh, we have very important updates are coming from the north of Umanska. The Ukrainian sources published the video of how they were bombing the Russian forces here. If you remember during the previous days we got report from Deep State that uh, the area between Balka Babaki River was under complete Ukraine control and now we received geolocation confirming this. So as you can see the situation for the Ukrainians in Alexander of Kapersh is getting worse and worse. There is, a, there is a gap between, still there is a gap between Russian positions and uh, the village itself. So most likely the Ukrainians maybe have one or a week and a 
half and after that they will be forced to abandon the village as well or at least uh, they will lose control over more than 60 or 70 percent and something like this now let's move to Karlovka. According to different reports that we received yesterday, Russians complete the encirclement of Yasnabrodovka, but after the first reports, we still haven't received any geolocations confirming this. Meanwhile, the Russians are bombing Karlovka itself with FAPs with stolen from tower systems, trying to prepare the foothold for further offensive. Of course, this is very interesting operation because a very interesting area because I don't know and I don't have an answer to the question whether the Russians are planning to move further in the western direction or or they're just bombing the Ukrainian forces because they can't do this because it's very difficult it might be very difficult to move further because there are water barrier and there are lots of strongholds of the armored forces of Ukraine just in this direction one two three four five strongholds and the villages itself so maybe the Russians do have some certain plan but for now I'm not sure what exactly they are planning to do now let's move to Krasnogorovka we have additional update according to uh, deep state the Russians improved their positions uh, let's say and capture this block of high-rise building and if summarize everything we see that the Russians captured probably 95% of the high-rise area so uh, we haven't received any geolocations whether the Russians captured this high-rise building area and whether the Russians captured this high-rise air building area but as for this part as for Krasnogorovka citadel most likely we're not going to see even a single battle for the citadel because the Russians are not going to do this it's a very risky and of course the Russians will suffer losses if they begin let's say offensive operation in this direction the Russians are trying and moving in the northern and the northwestern direction like this way trying to force the Ukrainians to abandon their positions and to fall back and I, I expect that if the Russians continue developing their offensive further in the northern direction probably maybe five ten days and the Ukrainians will abandon their positions themselves because it's too risky it's too risky to stay there because you can be always encircled by the Russians now let's move further in the north southern direction we have additional updates uh, from uh, the area between Vladimirovka, Ugledar, Vadyana, Salotke. Today we got additional confirmations that the Russians captured this territory. For now we are keeping this area as a gray zone, as a contested area. We are waiting for additional geolocated updates to color this territory in a proper color. Uh, let's talk about Surajana, Stara Mayorska. We have additional updates. As we can see, we have adjusted the map. There are, we got two videos, two important videos from this area. This is the first one. In this video we can see the Russian soldiers begun offensive operation further in the northern direction the video was geolocated and uh, the Russian soldiers were spotted between these buildings which confirms let's say 90 percent 95 100 percent control over this territory and also it confirms that the Russians are planning to move further in direction of Makarovka the next village that located on this side of Mokryala river uh, very interesting videos where we received from the central Urajaina first the Russians were clearing the territory with FPV drones so with significant significant number of attacks by FPV operators and after the Russians cleared the territory they began offensive operation very varied and very interesting offensive operation in this video we can see a significant number of armored vehicles that were heading in direction of Ukraine positions in the so central and the northern part there were very heavy clashes some armored vehicles were abandoned and destroyed by the Russians but uh, this is the village where you know that the Russians start using very interesting tactics because uh, we saw the numbers significant number of armored vehicles in this video let's take a look at this video once again you see one two three four uh, let's say armored vehicles all of them were heading in the northern direction but their movements uh, let's say along the street doesn't mean that the villages and let the buildings and constructions around were captured by the Russians and the territory was under Russian control. No. Now the Russians are using completely new tactics. Not now. They start using these tactics probably a few months ago and the same tactics the Russians uh, used in uh, uh, Volchansk, the same tactics the Russians are using right now in this area and the same tactics the Russians were using in Krasnogorovka. So what the Russians are doing? They use significant number of armored 
light vehicles. They start using these turtle tanks, which are very difficult to destroy by FPV drones. We see that the Ukrainians have problems with supply support with anti-tank weapon. So the Russians uh, increase their chances to bypass significant territories without being destroyed as a result of counterfire. So what the Russians are doing? They're using four, five, six tanks. They breaking through the Ukrainian defense belt and they're moving as far as possible in the northern direction with the purpose to capture some stronghold. For example, as for Rajaina, most likely the Russians tried to capture this territory and most likely the Russians captured this area as a result of attack. After that, uh, the Ukrainians become encircled or cut uh, by the say, Russian positions in this area because from this area the Russians controlled the main supply roads and there were no chances for the Ukrainians who were located between this red line and red territory to withdraw their positions or to run away. Of course, uh, at this moment the Ukrainians are trying to counterattack, but it's very difficult to counterattack without armored vehicles, uh, positions in high-rise building where there are significant number of snipers, lots of FPV drones in the skies and many many other things so most likely the ukrainians are sitting between the basements between the buildings and waiting when the main forces of armored force to ukraine can counterattack the russians and to break the defense but during the previous uh, days during the previous battles it wasn't now uh, let's say it didn't help the ukrainians much the ukrainians of course counterattack but most of the previous attacks in the in the other areas were repelled by the russians and while the russians uh, let's say first attack group is located encircled of course and located in this building the main russian forces started moving from the south and they start clearing the territory one by one by building by another one street by another so this is the tactics that the russians are using right now in rajaina the same tactics the russians were using in staromayorska we remember those videos with significant number of armored vehicles the russians were trying to get as far as possible in the northern part and they were blocking the pos possibility of supplying and supporting their forces let's say from the north and why the ukrainians were where, let's say dig deeper between the basements the main russian forces were clearing the territory and this is the same tactics that the russians were using in Vavchansk, as we discussed in the previous update yesterday in the evening first the russians uh, answered aggregate plant they captured this foothold they blocked the main supply roads and while the russians were repelling uh, upcoming let's say crane counter attacks the main russian forces were uh, trying to break the let's say the streets and the buildings until they get the Vavchansk aggregate plant and the russians managed to do this as for the ukrainians they had the same situation they had such a positions in uh inside of citadel but the main forces haven't managed to break the russian encirclement and blockade and to get uh, the citadel so this is the only difference so this is very interesting tactics as, as you can see and furthermore we got the same even in uh, side of uh, let's say uh, Lipsy direction because the Russians captured the village of Gluboka problem the third or fourth day after the beginning of offensive and after that the main Russian forces were clearing the territory uh, but, and were moving further and further closer and closer to the main defense position so this is new tactics from the Russian side and these tactics become possible after the Russians found the solution how to improve the armor of their vehicles and their let's say a tank fist and let's say something like this and that's it for today military summary channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye